We need to sacrifice someone. I say, I say we bring this one back to life. Yay! You're alive again! But you're still angry. You're not grateful. Are you kidding me? This game came out on the 11th of August. It's not even a week old and it's blown up. Let's see why and what it's all about. In this video, you're going to get intel on my opinions on the game. Let's go. It's Australian made by developers Massive Monster and you play the role of a seemingly cute but possessed lamb. In my own words, think Stardew Valley cross with happy tree friends. Basically, you were sacrificed but brought back to life by an ominous god who in return asks you to run a cult as repayment. Because I mean, why not? It's not that straightforward though. You get to recruit new followers by visiting these other regions. There are five regions altogether, all but one is unlocked, and the rest unlock as you defeat each boss per region. Massive Monster, the developers, say that the gameplay can take anywhere between 15 to 20 hours to complete. I stream on Twitch. I've spent about 15 hours or so on the game, and I mean, I'm only up to the second boss. I do like to take my time on a game and stream, so I really do appreciate it when the game lasts longer than what they say it will. Speaking of Twitch, you can integrate this game, which allows your actual followers to interact with you. They can either work with you or against you. More on that here in the description below. I've also been told there are some bug issues, but I've been lucky enough not to have any. I do recommend saving your game manually whenever you remember, just to avoid starting from scratch. All right, let's get into the pros. Number one, I love how cute and adorable the cult is, but don't for a second think that this gameplay is easy because it's cute, no. The world is dark and deadly too, and besides the boss fights, the regions aren't that simple to get through. Each region gets more and more difficult as you progress. You can choose your difficulty, I'd recommend medium. Number two, the music is pretty funky. A lot of people have said it's really enjoyable. The way to describe it is, well, take a listen. Number three, character progression. Now, as you progress, you learn how to take care of your cult. Your followers gain more faith in you or not. They may fall in love with each other. You may want to get married or maybe want to go down the other aisle. The Isle of Destruction, where you sacrifice your followers and get them to fear you. You also learn that some followers lose faith in you, which could happen for a number of reasons. I'll create another video of that soon. When this happens, you can choose their fate. Number four. There's also the in-game incentives which helps you level up your ability to run a cult successfully. For example, you can get beds to build and when you progress, you can upgrade those beds to tents. Eventually, you can upgrade those tents to luxury sleeping quarters. I really like how easy and uncomplicated these incentives are. As in, it looks complicated at first because of all the things you need to do to run the cult, but that overwhelming feeling will subside as you will get the hang of things pretty fast. Number five, game mechanics. It is recommended to use a controller. I don't mind using keyboard or mouse, but I personally found the Xbox controller more fun for me. The mechanics are pretty straightforward. It even tells you which button or key to use when interacting or committing to an action. So what about the cons? Number one, this game is quite colorful and in no way is that a bad thing. I, however, have found that my eyes are quite sensitive to the bright colors since I've had laser eye surgery before. And after some time, I found that my eyes get sore and tired. Number two, the game is addictive. Again, not really a bad thing, but you want to keep grinding, such as chopping wood, picking stones, fishing, cooking, gardening, going on missions to collect resources and saving potential recruits, and yes, collecting poop. You'll also need to perform sermons every day, and if possible, rituals too. So all this could be a little tedious because you do want to progress in the game, fight the bosses, and clear the other regions. Number three, some people might view this game in a negative light because there is some talk that it's somewhat satanic or demonic. I can understand that, and this game isn't for everyone, but it really is just that, a game. And there you have it, folks. Overall, I would say there's more pros than cons here. And to be honest with you, I gotta get going because I need to play some Cult of the Lamb. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did and subscribe to support a small content creator like me. Let me know your thoughts on Cult of the Lamb. Till next time, bye.